let's get this 1960s reading week started. I have a lot of books to read. For a while, I thought I was going to be skipping the 60s because the only books I could find didn't interest me. Some people may freak out about because there's a lot of books that people talk about or literary masterpieces that were made during this time, but they just didn't interest me. I turned that around real quick. I have seven, maybe eight books now. That's a lot. I kind of got carried away because all the books I was finding were in audiobook form. So I was like, oh yeah, I can do this. And then next thing I know I have that many books. I do have one physical book. There will be some actual reading sequences. I have four that I want to read. Like I need to read those and if I finish them then I have the rest to read afterwards. We'll get there when we get there. I am in the middle of two books right now so I'm having to pause reading those. I'm like almost halfway through The Astonishing Color of After so I'm needing to pause that and I'm also in the middle of To All the Boys I've Loved Before. And those are both for my Asian readathon. That is during the month of May. Since neither of those were written or set in the 60s, they're on a pause. I think the book I am starting off with is The Road to Woodstock. I need to know more about the infamous Woodstock because that, that right there is just the epitome of the 60s. Freaks looking like they could have been from New York or San Francisco were scattered among the crowd, but much of the audience looked like straight college kids. Woodstock is very interesting. Very interesting. I have known the basics of Woodstock. Like, I don't think anyone on this planet hasn't heard of Woodstock in some way, shape, or form. Before reading this, I knew it was a music festival with a bunch of hippies, and there was a bunch of mud and like drugs. That was it. <laughs> Reading this, it was very in-depth. It was written by the guy who started it and it went in so much depth with all the numbers and behind the scenes. I zoned out. Oh, I could not have read this as a physical book because I could barely read it as an audiobook. It was interesting but it, it's just one of those things that it read so much like a documentary and as someone who really enjoys watching documentaries and like seeing all these different things like it was reading so much like a documentary that I was like why can't I just watch this documentary instead of listening to eight hours. I'm just glad this book didn't take much longer to read or listen to because i would have DNF'd it. Not because I didn't enjoy it, but just because like, I get it. <laughs> I didn't update any whenever I was reading The Road to Woodstock because I just, there's nothing to update on. <laughs> Literally had no feelings towards the book. Now I'm going to start two more. Yeah, you heard me right, two more. <laughs> I'm gonna start Slaughterhouse-Five, which is the 
only book I have on Kindle, and I'm also going to start another audiobook. Not at the same time. I think the audiobook I'm gonna pick up is A Caribbean Mystery by Agatha Christie. I haven't loved the books I've read from her so far. I've read like two of them. The other two I read was Her Hercule Pruo. I'm not saying his name right. They were in his series. So I'm reading one that's not in his series. At least I don't think it is. I think I'm gonna start with Slaughterhouse Five and do some actual reading. about war but apparently we're talking about aliens you can't see this there we go but apparently what the aliens say makes sense to me like does that make me an alien too am I a tramphala door <laughs> goodness this book is weird it's not starting off how I thought it would start off. Hi, baby. Hi. Oh. I am liking this Agatha Christie novel a lot more than the other ones. So maybe it is. Pro. 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 -ro. <laughs> it's French and I'm Southern. But I am liking this one a lot more. I'm finding the mystery interesting. Although I am confused at time because in the beginning I thought she was 19 for some reason. Actually, she's an old lady. And then also a bunch of the men, I'm getting them mixed up too. I'm too lazy to turn on any lights. So I'm sitting here in front of Ted Cooper's tank. <laughs> it's been a pretty good day. Maybe not as productive as I would have liked, but can't really complain. I'm almost done with the Caribbean mystery. I don't want anyone to think that I am rushing these stories this week because I'm not. I am trying to listen to them as thoroughly as I can. I'm not just doing this to have add a whole bunch of books to my Goodreads because I already won my original challenge and I did bump it up to 100 but I don't I don't need to rush so I'm not doing that I'm just I want to read these books and I know what I can and can't do when I listen to audiobooks so I'm just doing those things but I am almost done and I don't know if <laughs> mysteries are just really smart or if I'm just really dumb because I can never pick up on any clues in these old mysteries or just any mystery in general I can pick up on clues in thrillers but mysteries I'm, I'm in the dark till they explain it word for word. While I was watching the Lizzie McGuire movie. I was working on my, some of my map stuff for my story. I had already made the huge world map, which I wanna, I wanna show you cause I'm proud of it. See, this is the main island right here. And then you have up here is the, where all the criminals and bad guys are. And then the mermaids all live in the water. But yeah, and then you can see this part right here. That's where our story takes place. This little, this little township right here named Ollery right now. I'm trying to figure out the 
towns and the names and stuff. So we have the big one, and that's Olary City. Very cl clever naming. But then I have 33 more to name. <laughs> we won't be in all these places, but it'll just, you know, give me more options with maybe other stories. So now I need to figure out the map of Olary City and the map of Mowgli's hometown because those are the most important ones. The other ones are just for fun. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna quit talking. Ted Cooper's just staring at me like, shut up. <laughs> it's release day for Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I say that and I act really excited about that. It's not like I'm gonna get to read the book anytime soon because I can't buy it. But hopefully my library will have it and then I can read it during Panamathon. Fingers crossed. So I don't know if I could ever rate a mystery, at least this type of mystery, five stars. A Caribbean mystery is definitely four stars. Thinking of all the five star books I've read, I don't know if I could do that. Mainly just because like it's only the beginning and the end that are exciting and fun and the middle is kind of just like okay Let's get there. It'll be interesting to see if I ever do rate a uh, mystery five stars. I definitely liked this one a lot better than our other ones. So maybe it is. Miss Marple is where it is and not the other guy. I've already butchered his name way too many times. So I'm just not gonna say it again. I am two hours and 40 minutes into the book and it's taken me a little while to kind of get a grasp on it. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm not grasping everything I need to be grasping. I think I'm getting it. <laughs> Slowly. <laughs> Look at Bagheera just peeping over. <laughs> so we are going back and forth between two different times when Huey, our main character, is in school up in New York and when he was down south in Georgia, I think, during a summer. And I think it's him realizing and understanding racism pretty much because he is a biracial teen. He's a young boy in the summer timeline but he's like 14 in the school timeline. And I think that's what's confusing me is him coming to terms with it because it's not fully explaining everything that's happening because he's not understanding everything that's happening around him and it's him trying to figure it out. And so I think that's why I'm having a hard time fully grasping everything in this novel because our, our main character is the one narrating it and he doesn't even know. There's a snail. There's a snail outside. It's almost two o'clock in the morning and I can't sleep, but it's okay because I must be using this time wisely and getting a lot of reading done. Since, you know, I want to read seven books. Hi. Oh, that's my leg. No, not even close. I'm using this time to scroll on TikTok. I have seen two of those TikTok well-being things that pop up after you've been on there too long. I've seen two of those so far. I feel like I've peeked. <laughs> peeked into a bottomless pit. <sighs> I just wanna go to sleep. But I'm wide awake. Ow! I want to show y'all the beautiful morning me. <laughs> Stop it. We got the beautiful hair. We got the really sickly looking skin. Stop <laughs> biting me. I just figured, you know, this would be a great laugh. I'm not, you, you, you can't even see me. Wow. Mm. You can also see I'm still really tired. <laughs>
this book is making more sense now. Now that our main character is beginning to see what is actually going on. But I don't understand why his parents aren't telling him. He's asking questions about like, why do, why are they treated different? Um, stuff like that. But they're not really answering. They're, an they're answering in a way that like doesn't actually answer the question. And I would say that this book is doing good to be historically accurate but also what's happening in the book still happens today and it's really hard to listen to as someone with white privilege i don't ever have to think about this i don't ever have to do anything like this or take precautions i can read all the books in the world but i'm never gonna fully understand also on another note this little boy cusses so much oh my goodness i just finished they come in all colors and it's a really weird ending i mean it makes sense but still like towards the end things happen whenever he's older and in new york but it doesn't fully explain why or if it did, I'm just too dense to understand it. But aside from the confusion and the language, this was a good book. Nothing else to really say on it, right now at least. I definitely need to sit on it, but I'm pretty sure it's a four star book. But yeah, while I was finishing it, I was drawing and hopefully soon I'll be able to have an Etsy up with these types of drawings and it'll be fun. So I think I'm going to continue drawing and I'm going to listen to Before We Were Free by Julia Alvarez because that's the shortest of the next books that I have to listen to. I don't really know what I'm saying. The only important thing about this update is I'm drawing, I've finished a book, and I'm about to start a new one. I enjoy sewing but I'm still very new at it so it takes me a lot longer. <laughs> then it probably should to do the things that I'm trying to do. I've been making a rabbit teepee for the rabbits so they can like have a place to hide that looks cute. But while I've been doing that, I've been listening to When We Are Free. I think that's the name of it. But I've been listening to that and it's really interesting. Like I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot. It's probably the book I've enjoyed the most so far. It's sort of a true story, but also not because the author, she wrote it based off of her family, but it's not like historically accurate in her family's history, but it's based off of things that happened, if that makes sense. But it's really interesting. And it's also narrated by the author, which I always think is so cool in audiobooks. I think I'm halfway through the book because it was like not that long of a book. I don't know if I'm good at explaining the books I'm reading. I don't know how to talk about it without just saying what happens and what I'm thinking of everything. Or at least that's how I talk about books to Walter is I tell him everything that's happened and like what I think about it and stuff like that. But I can't really say everything that happens because then spoilers and then only people who have read the books would watch the videos and I don't wanna do that. I want to have it to where anyone can watch my videos if they want. Maybe I just need to like really look at how other people talk about the books without like spoiling it. Just need to go to booktube school and study all the other booktubers. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be a skill that can get better. Same as like reviews. <laughs> I'm just not good at critically reading because that's not why I read. I don't read to really analyze what's being said to pull out things. Like I mostly read to have fun, to escape, to see different worlds and different perspectives than what I experience. Pick up. Look. Look. Oh, okay. Okay, fine. I guess it'll just be me then. The mamma's here. Bye.
thank you. <laughs> yeah. I finished before we were free. Loved it. Oh my goodness, such a good book. As I was listening to it and as it was getting closer to the end, she's writing in her journal and we're reading the journal entry and it's like frantic, like, I need to put this out there just in case something happens, blah, blah, blah. And then it just cuts off. And then it starts, the audiobook starts playing music. And I'm like, is this like the closing music where they're like, thanks for listening to this audiobook, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, it cannot end there. No. Luckily it didn't. And I was able to compose myself and actually get to the end of the book. And it was so good. Not much happened to the main character. It was mainly the main character watching what is happening around her in her country. Her father tries to liberate the country from a dictatorship and basically the consequences of what's happening affecting her and her interpretation of everything as a 12 year old it was i it was good it was good i definitely would recommend it so i i had like an hour left of the audiobook this morning and so i just decided to you know play some animal crossing while i listened to it and just finished it up before i start the rest of my day this week is already really tiring me like just reading even though I'm listening, but still just having my brain like constantly staying focused so I can remember and understand what's going on in the book. My brain's not used to that. It's not used to working. And also because I'm trying to start selling stuff on Etsy and figuring all that out and then also working on my book and it's just it's just a lot. I don't know if I want to continue reading 1960s books. If I'm honest, I'm, I want to continue listening to All the Boys I Loved Before and reading The Astonishing Color of After. I've enjoyed what I've read with the 1960s and I still want to read the other books, but I don't know if I want to force myself to read them all this week. I feel like I'm failing this vlog if I do just kind of stop right now, but also I don't want to force myself to read. Like that completely contradicts the what I'm wanting to do. I don't know. I'll see. But that's the update that I have to give. Say bye to Bigura. Bye. I just ate some salad and now I don't feel good. So I think I'm allergic to healthy food. And also I'm not enjoying Slaughterhouse Five at all. That's all I've been doing this morning. I've been reading that. I took a break to start another Animal Crossing embroidery. I'm doing Ellie, but this book, I even looked on YouTube to see if I could find an audiobook version and I did but like even that's not helping me get like really interested in this story and I also have no clue what's going on like it keeps going back and forth and not in a way that makes sense like it's not going back and forth between two different times it's like going from the war to like this time and then to this time and then to this time and this time and this time and just like it's not making any sense and I I just want to read to all the boys I've loved before and the other the, the other books. I don't want to listen to this or read it. I cannot get in a reading slump because next month is Panamathon and I'm doing that. <laughs> I've gotten a lot of my books already picked out for each of the prompts. And I've even gotten some that will fit in with um, my 1970s readathon next month and then also Panamathon. So that way I'm not reading like 20 books. One thing I've been thinking about lately is if reading more books is really good. Because last year I read 54 books, I think. And I pretty much remembered 
every book I read. Not in the sense that like I remembered every little detail. I remembered picking it up and I remembered how the book made me feel. But as I'm reading more, I've already passed that <laughs> and it's only May. Is it better to read for the experience of the then and just experience a story and different things like that? Or is it better to really remember and have books stay with you for longer? What's more important? I mean, at the end of the day, you do you. And so like, if I wanna read 500 books in a year, which, oh my goodness, then I can do that, you know? But it's just, I'm wondering for myself if I really wanna be reading as many books as I am. Because it's not like I'm picking up more five-star amazing reads. The more books I read, the more like three-star books that I read, which three stars is not bad. Three stars to me is, it's a good book. It's just not gonna be one of my favorites, you know? And if I'm going to read more, then shouldn't I be reading more favorites? I don't know. I've just been thinking about that a lot and maybe, maybe y'all can put your opinions down below of what's better, remembering every book you read or just experiencing the book. I think it may be just experiencing the book because not every book is hard-hitting and thought-provoking like that's not why people write stories that, that at least that's not why i'm writing stories i'm writing stories to be entertainment to allow people to take a break from their lives for a little bit i was just thinking about that and thought i would share those thoughts while i'm curled up in a ball because of salad. But no, I really do think I'm going to DNF Slaughterhouse Five. Literary people do not come after me, please. I tried. Now it's time for the wrap up for this reading week. This is my second time filming this because I didn't like it. <laughs> and I figured why not do it outside? Except for now that I am actually outside, I'm really paranoid that people can hear me. But you know what? It's not like I'm ever going to talk to my neighbors. <laughs> so I guess it's okay if they think I'm a little bizarre. Okay, so the first book that I finished this week was The Road to Woodstock. I ended up actually rating it, just giving it two stars, just because it was boring. I really liked getting to know more about Woodstock. Hundreds of thousands of people came together to this place and there was no violence at all. It was very civilized. Kind of makes me want to go back and be a part of it. This book read a lot like a documentary and I feel like it was made for people who were really interested in the nitty gritty of what happened. It was just an eight hour long documentary. There's an ant on my microphone. Excuse me, sir. Thank you. I, I think I'm still interested in watching the original documentary that they made in 1970. Like, I think that would be cool. And actually get to feel what's going on and not just the clinical like this happened then this happened then this happened but like actually get to feel the emotions that went along with all the things happening the next book i read was a caribbean mystery i gave this book four stars it was really good i just love the idea of a elderly grandmother who enjoys knitting and gossiping figuring out these murderers and catching them her just playing off of what people assume about old people. Like, oh, you need help walking and stuff like that. When actually she's really just perfectly capable and just 
figuring stuff out. There is mentions of suicide in the story, so just be forewarned about that. No one is actually committing suicide or attempting anything, but the murderer is using suicide as a way to not be sus suspected of murder if you know what I mean. This was my favorite Agatha Christie that I've read. Sorry, Murder on Orient Express. I'm just glad I found a Agatha Christie that I really enjoyed. I don't have to play up my enjoyment of the book. Like, I genuinely enjoyed it. And the only reason I can't give it five stars is because the middle. The middle always gets me. It's just boring. <laughs> Mainly that's because I can't pick up on clues. So, but the beginning when figuring it out and the ending when everything like comes and they, they tell you everything that happened, like that's my favorite part. And I think this book did that, those two parts really well. The next book I read was They Come in All Colors and I gave this book four stars as well. The whole time I was reading it, I was confused and trying to really understand what happens, but in this story, we follow a young boy named Huey. He is a biracial kid, and it goes between two different times. One during a summer when he is eight years old in Georgia, and the other when he is like, I think 14. I'm not really sure, but he's significantly older, and he's at school in New York City. We follow him, and him kind of reflecting back on that summer when uh, two African-American boys are caught in a public pool. It brings outrage in the community, a lot of racist, racial problems, and him fully understanding what happened that summer and kind of discovering what racism is and how it affects him and just stuff like that. Through the whole book we're reflecting on his life but because he is an eight-year-old and he's not being told the full story of everything that's happened we don't really get the full story of what happens but as the story goes on we are the truth is uncovered and the lies are pushed away. Some of my complaints about this book are really surface level complaints. Like I was just confused for a good majority of the book and that little boy had such a sailor's mouth. Oh my goodness. But other than that I feel like this is a good book. This book doesn't have very many reviews on Goodreads at all but it came out last year. I feel like it's a good conversation starter about what happened in the 60s and basically what is still happening today. And then I read my favorite book of the week, Before We Were Free. I gave this book five stars. So glad I read it. Oh my goodness. And this is one of those books I wouldn't have picked up if it wasn't for this 1960s readathon. I would have never heard about it. I mainly picked it up because of the cover and I read like a little bit of the synopsis, like the first two sentences, and I was like, sure, let's give this a try. So glad I did. In this book, we follow this 12-year-old girl, and basically she is talking about her life as she lives in the Dominican Republic, I think, living under a dictatorship. Her family having to go into hiding because they took part in it. Her and them trying to become free and live the life that they deserve to have. She doesn't fully understand what's going on and she's questioning what she thought is not true. Just having to change her perspective of when she thought everything was okay but actually it's not and then having to make everything okay. It was really good. It was like talking to a friend. I can't really explain it. It just, even though it was hard to read at times, I think it was so worth it. And just the way that it was, everything was explained and just 
how things were worded. Nothing was confusing. I understood fully what was going on, even if the, our main character didn't, which I appreciated. I also liked that it was narrated by the author, and it was her talking about her family's life. And then the last book I ended up DNFing, which was Slaughterhouse Five. I ended up watching a crash course on Slaughterhouse Five, and it makes sense, but I don't regret DNFing it. I was not enjoying that book at all. It's one of those books that a lot of people are forced to read in school. I wasn't, and now I'm glad I wasn't. I wish I could have enjoyed it. Yeah, I was not expecting aliens to pop up in an anti-war book, but they did. But it was still just so convoluted that I couldn't really enjoy any of it. I'm not going to force myself to read it because it's not for school. I don't have to finish that book, so I'm not going to. So those are all the books I read. I think reading four books, I think that's really good. So I'm not complaining at all. I'm so thankful I got my first five star of this month, which is really sad, actually, because it's the almost the end of the month. I have only one more week, but still thankful that I have at least one five star. My next readathon will be my 1970s readathon. If you want to participate with me or if you just want to know in advance when it's coming, it will be in June during this week right here. <laughs> During that week, I will be reading my 1970 books written or set in the 1970s, and I already have them picked out, and I'm already so, so excited for all of them. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great morning or evening whenever you're watching this, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!